We go down by the river to camp sometimes when it is a little cooler. One night, it was a little buggy, so we retired inside, protected by the mosquito screens on our camper windows and the screen door. Safe at last. Whoa, what are those, and how did they get inside the camper? We closed up the windows and swatted as many as we could and spent the rest of the evening in the camper without any ventilation. I took a few of these critters home for closer examination to figure out how they got in. Here they are. I believe they are called microcatus flies. They have feather-like wings, and they're about three to four millimeters long and one millimeter wide. They don't bite, but biting midges and sandflies are even smaller, and they do bite, and they will suck your blood just like a mosquito. Here are the microcatus flies in comparison to a typical screen like the ones that came with the camper. You can see how they can go head first right through these holes. And here they are on some noceum mesh. This noceum mesh should work fine. So we made up some temporary noceum panels that we could throw up on two of our windows temporarily when needed. We sewed Velcro loops along three edges of this noceum panel and just left extra material on the fourth side to tuck into the bottom of our windows. We can quickly add these when needed and still get a little bit of ventilation. Two of these noceum panels prevented the swarm the next time we went to our favorite river camp. But does the ventilation suffer with a tighter mesh? Well, you know me by now. I like to test things. I found a third screen at our local Army-Navy store that is a little tighter than the typical mosquito screen, as in our camper. But it's more open than the noceum mesh. I'll call this the tighter screen. Here are the three materials close up. The estimated number of holes per square inch is shown. The tighter screen has holes around one millimeter square, and it should stop these microcatus flies, but maybe not anything smaller. However, we've never seen anything smaller in the last four years traveling across three countries, so I think it would work for us. But how do these three screens compare as far as airflow and ventilation? We need to replace our door screens eventually. But how much of a loss in ventilation are we willing to suffer for a fairly uncommon problem? Probably a little, but not a significant loss in ventilation. I set up a fan with two speeds and made up small test panels. I set up my handheld wind speed gauge in front of the downwind side of the panel and aimed my GoPro at it to record the readings. The fan produced an airspeed of about 3 miles per hour on the low setting and 4 miles per hour on the high setting without any screens. Light winds like this are probably typical of warmer conditions where you need the ventilation. So without the screen, we have about 2.7 to 3.1 miles per hour. With the typical screen, we're getting about 2.0. This is the tighter screen. Now we're getting about 1.6 to 1.8 miles per hour. And finally with the no seam with a lot more holes. We're getting about 1.1 miles per hour. Here are the results. This chart shows the average wind speed in miles per hour for each of four cases, beginning with the test with no screen at all, followed by the low fan and high fan measurements for the typical screen, the tighter screen, and the no-CM mesh. As expected, 
The wind speed or airflow is lower each time the screen mesh gets tighter. To simplify the results, I averaged the low and high fan results for each case and charted the percent reduction in airflow compared to the no screen case. Here are the average airflow reductions for the typical screen, like the one that came with your camper on the left, the tighter screen in the middle, and the no CM mesh on the right. So in conclusion, it appears that the typical screen causes a 30% reduction in airflow compared to no screen at all. So this is the base case. The tighter screen only causes a 14% additional reduction. Probably not enough to worry too much about. The no -seum mesh decreases airflow twice as much as a typical screen, and that is a little more significant. But will this tighter screen stop all the tiny bugs? I've collected a little data on the length of some tiny flying pests and estimated their widths. Since the width is what is important, but not usually reported, you just have to look at the pictures and decide that their width is roughly about 50% of their length, except for the micro caddislice, which are longer and which I measured directly. Here are my results for the three materials I tested and their whole sizes. In this chart, we are comparing the estimated insect widths in this column with the hole sizes for each screen material here. If the critter's width is greater than the hole dimensions, the answer is no. That pest cannot go through the screen window. The red yeses are a bad result, and the cautionary yellow maybe suggests some might get through if they are at the smaller end of the species variability. If you camp sometimes where there are biting midges or sandflies, you may want to go with the no CM mesh, at least for temporary panels. As I mentioned earlier, we need to replace the screens on our screen door before too long. But do we really want to have a tighter mesh permanently installed on the screen door to permanently reduce our ventilation when it's only really needed a few days out of the year? Now let's examine the ventilation loss from having the tighter mesh on the screen door when there are no tinies around and we have all the other windows open because we just want good ventilation. We measured the screen areas on all the windows and the door and determined that the door screens represent 30% of the total screen area. So if only the factory door screens are replaced with a tighter screen, the permanent reduction in overall airflow is only 4%. We can live with that. And a similar calculation shows that the no CM installed on the door would result in a 9% overall reduction in airflow when all the other windows are open with their factory screens. Still not too bad. Or you could just make up four temporary Velcroed no CM mesh panels like ours. I hope this video arms you with the data you need on hole size and airflow reduction to decide where you want to compromise, depending on the climates and the bugginess of your destinations. You might consider just a few temporary Velcroed panels of either the tighter material or the no CM, or you may want to go all the way with one of those to permanently replacing your existing screen on your screen door if tiny bugs are really a problem for you. Just a note, I looked at changing out the screen on our Fantastic Fans, but it did not seem to be easy to remove, so I left it and figured if there are bugs, I'd just keep the covers closed or I would turn them on blowing out so no tinies can come in. Thanks a lot for watching.